Rubbing in with Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad, an iHeartRadio and two-time People's Choice Award-winning podcast. So anyways, the next day, I, they got they were like, hey, we redirected your flight. You're actually flying into Burbank now. I'm like, that's perfect. They yeah. redirected my bag. It was like, great. <laughs> we're in the air about to land, and they're like, the conditions in Burbank aren't... Um, safe for us to land so we're actually gonna land in ontario which is like an hour away wow and i'm like you're kidding like i'm still in the same clothes <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just like this is oh Haley had driven my car to the burbank airport to the mm. valet so i could just get in my car and come home so i was like in my mind i thought you know what last night wasn't great it's gonna be great today i'm getting home yeah I, we didn't. We went up to three. Haley and I went to Three Rivers because I've never been to the sequoia trees. It's been like a dream of mine forever, and so we went, and it was like it looked like a winter wonderland up there. It was like where we stayed. It wasn't snowing, which was so nice because it was just like calm Cold. and peaceful. But then we drove up, and it was snowing so much. And um, and yeah. I didn't. I think I fell asleep at ten thirty on New Year's Eve, which I was so happy about. I had no like, I had no hesitation about going to sleep before midnight. And to be honest, so I always take edibles. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna partake in weed, I take edibles, and I know my limitations. Like I know what's gonna make me feel just like relaxed and go to sleep. I know what's gonna make me high and like want to like eat and laugh. But for the first time, I tried a joint, and it was an absolute nightmare. I ca- started coughing so bad. I thought I was going to die. I was like, how do people do this? Apparently, I did it wrong. And um, I was like, I don't feel anything. And then, like, 20 minutes after the fact, I was cruising. It was a good time. Were you cruising for a bruising? Wait, so when, no, I wasn't smoke, cruising for a bruising. When you smoke I was a just joint, cruising. do you smoke it like a cigarette? Like you smoke it down to the bottom? I I literally don't know. Like I just took, I took, Haley goes, do it like this. I did it and nothing happened. And she goes, you didn't, you didn't like, you didn't suck any in. And I was like, okay, so I do it again. I start coughing. I have it on video. <laughs> I start coughing and like do you know when you get too much pool water in your mouth and you do like that gag like choke thing yeah I did that it was like a nightmare it was a disaster but but I felt really good and had a great time and that's why I fell asleep at 10 30 relaxed ready for the new year <laughs> and then how do you feel the next day do you get hung over from a joint no you don't get hung over at all that's the best part it's like anyone phase that I don't. I don't believe that's true. I, I think that the the honeymoon phase, by definition, has to have an ending to it, and it's not. A, it's not a hard end. It's just gradual. Yeah. Well, let me yeah. tell you, with my me with my nasal strip, my drippy nose, and like the zit on the side of my face was really coming in strong last night. This is a good conversation, though, and I think we could deep dive into it because I still feel definitely like honeymoon phase but i do feel like it's so different at the beginning because once you get to know certain things about each other it's like that like giddy blinder thing that you have during the honeymoon phase is gone but it's it's not necessarily a bad thing right so that's a good that's a good topic. yeah that's a, yeah you're right it's not a bad thing and i don't mean to imply that it's a bad thing when the honeymoon phase goes away but it's going to go away and, and it's going to get and it gets deeper at that point right like also, at this point i like stopped plucking my nip, plucking my nipple hairs oh <laughs> you just went straight to laser wax or just they're there there <laughs> yeah that's when you know that's yeah you know, I think. <laughs> yeah i used to, i was like i was thinking about this the other day i would be like I would do like the body scrubs to where my skin was like so soft and then I'd get a tan and I was like lasered. Everything was just like tight and bright, bright and tight. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm just like, uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm didn't so even pale. Pack a like, razor. <laughs> didn't even pack a razor for a ski trip. Okay. I do always pack a razor, but that you may have. Yeah. You may have exited the phase of honeymoon. <laughs> You're on to the next phase, whatever that is. <laughs>
appetizer across and then entree side by side correct that means a few drinks in i'll feel more comfortable getting over on the same side Uh, yes correct like one drink in and i won't feel like a total weirdo being on the same side as you. yeah on my birthday um Haley and i went to eat and she goes it was really loud in the restaurant we were in she was like can i sit do you mind if i sit on the same side as you and i was like (laughs) (laughs) Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was you have like, to yeah that's fine and she's like no i mean i can go on the other side it's just loud and i was like no it's fine <laughs> i had to get a good spicy mark in before i could really <laughs> relax and let myself feel settled it's just I weird it. because i like looking at my wife me? when we're together wait you mean like sitting across yes yes yeah you don't like touching her I'm going to hold I hands mean, across the table if you need to touch. My hands are busy. My hands are eating and cutting things and drinking things. And my hands are active. I like looking at her. Really? See, like, I like I this do. even. I'm like. I love this. I love I don't this. mind. Like, this doesn't. This oh, It doesn't not. <laughs> <laughs> but like the having to turn. <laughs> like us. Becca, when, when did folk. you have COVID? Uh, August. So this is bothering me. And you still can't smell and it's been five months. No, no, I can, I can, I probably have, I would say 50% of my smell. So if it's a really fragrant wow. smell or like a really, but the bad smells all smell the same, which I've talked about. Like it all has the yeah. same, like I just know something's bad if I smell this certain smell. I'm like, oh, something and the smells taste? outside. You have your taste back? Taste is pretty much there. Citrusy things are a little weird, but other than that, pretty in Coke and Pepsi. But like when we were driving up to um for the New Year's Eve trip, Haley and I, I was like, does it smell bad outside? I have my smell. And she was like, it literally smells like poop. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, <laughs> she's I'd back, sensed baby. It. Yay. <laughs> no. no, I couldn't smell poop, though. I could only smell the smell that I smell. Becca, if 95p thought it would be a good idea for the two of you to drink each other's blood would you do that um no a la machine gun kelly and megan Fox. yeah no no i want it well tanya was fine with that if red star would like to do that she's fine with that hey, were y'all surprised by this answer <laughs> a little bit really <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I don't, uh, that's not anything he would ever want. Yeah, he would never. He would never. So it's easy for me to say if he asked, I'd say I'd be, I'd be cool with it. But I think it's more, uh, more of the thing of like, to me, every shoe has its foot. So it's like (laughs) Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly found their way to each other. You know what I mean? Like they both are down with that. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like if you are out there and you're dating and you have weird quirks or you have things that you like, and you don't think that that partner's out there, they are out there. It's true. I mean, I think 95P, both of us would equally say no to that. So it wouldn't be like one of us was looking to do that. But I mean, I agree. I think everyone has their own little things that maybe majority finds taboo or whatever. But yeah. Uh, Ari sent some nice ones. Ari says at this stage, respectively, do you think 95P and Red Star are end game? I feel like I am Easton's face. I can't, <laughs> like, like a little kid. Like popcorn I see is my off. future with 95 P, but like the whole, like, what is that? Does that mean marriage? Does that, what does that mean? I'm still trying to figure out, but I see my future with 95 P. So that is end game. Yeah, but in game that that stress. My therapist said that I don't need to think in, in that far in the future because it, it stresses me out. And she said, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. And because ninety five, but ninety five P loves like a direct answer about where our future is going, and I'm like, I feel like that's a trap because like, if I don't give a resounding yes, and I have any hesitation, then it's like, so you don't want to be with me? It's like, no. There's (laughs) there's just some space in between there. (laughs) So would ninety five P be okay with the idea if you were like, I, I, my plan is for the two of us to die in a nursing home holding hands together. Would ninety five P be okay with that future? Yeah, but like, I don't want that. (laughs) Yes, you do. I don't want to be in a nursing home. <laughs> oh, okay, well, it's not the, that yeah, yeah, remove that element of it. 
Yeah, I mean, that would that would probably be a great I mean, answer, but that's just so... I have commitment issues that I'm working on. Do you on, want, like, a like, Thelma and Louise going into the gorge? <laughs> there you like, go. Oh, you know? Yeah, something just, like, easy breezy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick. Yeah. <laughs> into the sunset. <laughs> yeah. I see myself traveling the world, having... Um, a ton of like crazy experiences, getting to do things, having my own company. I don't know what it looks like, but a very thriving, successful company. But when you're traveling, you're still going to be back on Mondays to do the podcast. Yeah, right? or I'm doing the metaverse. Okay. <laughs> Dean Unglert style, doing it from wherever the hell she is in the world. Yeah. Um, I love that. I hope I have decided by that point if I want kids or not for sure. Hopefully that decision's been made. 95P and I just both crushing it. In life. In life. And you're Mrs. 5P at this point, I think. I am yeah, Mrs. 5P. Becca 5P. And I got um, Phoebe's <laughs> Promo code. nine at that <laughs> that age. So still kicking. Yeah. Spunky. Spunky as hell. Her and Sunny All are right. best friends. Yeah. yeah. Sunny's Instagram is thriving and thriving, yeah. let me tell you. It's gone viral. <laughs> it's gone, she's gone viral. All right. Here's a fun one. Grossest habit your significant other has? My smacking. It. <gasps> That's <laughs> bad. Right. And it's not, it's like chewing loudly. So it's not really, it's not smacking because, because I have, I have expressed how much I can't handle smacking. It's just the, the chewing is loud. Even if the mouth mm. is closed, that would Make but me. then what, is, what, what are they like? There's I, no, I've also, I I've been accused of this as well, of being a loud chewer, even though I keep my mouth closed. That's I don't gross. know what to do with it. No, there's no it's solution. Not, what am I supposed to do about no, it? Mark, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to tell you there's no solution. It's just I have misophonia or whatever it is where yeah. mouth noises are very loud to me. And they there's nothing. I don't expect anything to be done. I just it is how I feel. Is it the shape of our skull just transmits the sound louder than most I feel people? I'm telling you with the jaws it. or something. I'm going to tell jaws you something, something, Mark. I've had many meals next to you, and I've never noticed you to be a smacker. So Thank you. I'm not a smacker because I don't open my mouth. So it's okay. That's okay. Well, okay. <laughs> I appreciate but that. But I will say 95P, I get really grossed out easily by like everything, and I'm very rarely grossed out by 95P. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 Who are your future bridesmaids? Ooh, I would like to add my proposal that I I want something. I want to be surprised, and I would like the I like a creative thought of like. Yes, I am so with you on that. Yeah. surprise is great. Um, so well, fu- uh, I don't know about future bridesmaids. You don't know who you're going to be close with in five years. But let's say if you had to get married tomorrow, maybe who would your bridesmaids be? Mine would be. Do I do I have a limit? What's your wedding? What do you mean I don't have a limit? Well, okay. My sisters, Tanya, Jojo, Laura, Brittany, Allie. Oh my god, you're one of those. <laughs> but I might just have everyone be a part of the like in like a uh, dressed and like but not make them stand up there, you know, just kind of be like my bridesmaids, but not do the whole making them stand because that sounds mean. I know. You know what's funny? As I have that same thought, I of don't like it's hard being I a bridesmaid. I don't want to have my friends all wear the same dress and stand up there with like a weird hairdo. I want all my bridesmaids to be in the same color, but not they can choose the color as long as they all like flow together in a photo. Like a yeah. Palette. But I also like. I get so much in, like I get my knees. I have to like bend my knees so I don't lock them because I get so like nervous standing in front, just standing there. So I don't know if I'll do that. But if I do, they're going to have a palette to choose from and wear a dress. But also, um, yeah. And Taylor Banks. Wow. That's like 10. I think I have 10. Yeah. I might have my sister stand up with me. And then if, you know, depending on, what 95p who 95p chooses but what big what it's big what's big 
What are you talking about your future wedding and your? I'm answering the question. I know it's a big deal. Yeah, Tanya, what you can't do when someone who has like anxiety about the future is make a, oh, big, make deal. a big deal. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's a lesson. <laughs> lesson 101. That's got a, it. Anxiety 101. Sorry, got it. You know, I'm super cool. I'm go with the flow girl. Like I am chill as Jill. We've almost been together for four years. So like that's not that big. It's just big because I'm like, it's squirmy. hypothetical. Yeah. I am squirmy. So squirmy. <laughs> it's interesting. All right. That's kind of a sweet one from Kay Silligen. What is your favorite thing about the other person's partner? Oh. Um, I'd say my favorite thing is that, uh, you know, for so long, I, I think Becca always used to say, like, I don't know if I'm capable of having these feelings. Like, I think I'm just like emotionally inept or like emotionally like not there. No, I'm serious. Void. Emotionally void. And ever since 95P came into her life, I feel like she now she finally knows what that feeling is like and that that feeling of, of deep love and wanting to be with somebody all the time and, and sacrificing for somebody and compromising for somebody. And, um, it's just been like a really beautiful thing to see her really experience love for the first time in her life in her, you know, late Mm twenties. So your favorite quality is, (laughs) <laughs> oh, it was her favorite. Oh, sorry. It was a favorite quality. Just well, that let me I'm check, happy. Let me check. Specifically, it says, what is your favorite thing about oh, the other person's partner? Perfect. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know. Well, so we went to Sedona and we ended up driving um, and it was, you know, it's like a seven hour drive and I really was determined to bring Phoebe. I don't know why, because I I never take her anywhere. But for some reason, I was like, I just want her to see the world. I think I was inspired by uh, Kaylin and Dean taking Pappy everywhere and him getting to like go on adventures, you know. But do you think they like those adventures? I feel like they like their home. Well, so I took Phoebe and I, I did have to. She's not very calm in the car. This happened over COVID. She used to be totally fine in the car. And now she's like a nightmare. But um, her vet prescribed her some like anxiety medicine. And so she was just out. Like she basically acted how she did when she's gotten into the weed, you know, just like totally calm mm-hmm. Zen, but like wouldn't go to sleep. But, um, so she went on. So then we went on a hike, like the first day we got there and she loved it. Like she did not want me to pick her up. There were a few parts where she, it was like, sh- like rock that was like a slide basically. And she just couldn't climb because she's, her legs are so little. And so I'd pick her up and she acted just so upset with me. Um, she's a little explorer and I had no idea. Cause I've always thought the same thing. I'm like, Phoebe's a homebody. She likes to be at home. And Haley was like, she's a dog. Like, of course she likes to be outside. And she's like, I think you created that narrative for her. And I'm like, <laughs> I may have done that, yeah. To do that. Could you do Amazing Race with 95P? Oh, no. We'd break up. (laughs) But Mm. we both have talked about this. But I I feel like that could happen. You know, like they've had big brother people before, maybe bachelor people. I don't know. It seems like you've got a level of celebrity that would entice them to have you on. That could happen. That, it could... It would be good TV, but also, would we look back on it fondly? I don't know. <laughs> look back on it fondly. <laughs> like, would we be able to sit down and watch it when it aired? I don't know about that. Um, but we've definitely talked about it because we both love it. Um, that's pretty insightful. It was. Ve- it was very uh, eye opening. I was like oh, wow, you're right. Like, I try and control everything. And sometimes things just are out of your control. I don't relate to that, but I do feel <laughs> like 95P is like that as well. And I that's a, such a, the visual of like having it all fit in a p- perfect little box that like shuts nicely is so that clicks with me because I'm like, that's that is such a great explanation of how you, like you, how you envision everything, like even having the dog, it's like, she's, 
She's trained. She knows. Oh yeah, exactly. she's trained. She knows where to poo, when to poo. She, yeah. She's gonna walk with her head held high. She is gonna be a fearless <laughs> modern woman, and she's just gonna be a great addition to the family. And like she is all of those things, but like infertility. And so I would be. I'm interested to know why they went the surrogate route. I know, but isn't that interesting that we, because we want to know, we feel like. Like, there's plenty of people who could share why they chose a surrogate, you know? Like, there's plenty of people who choose to be open about that journey. And then there's people who are like, everything else in my life is out there, so I don't feel like this is something I wanted to share. But because we're all, like, we're all like, we want more information, we want more information. And I I relate because I, you know, with my relationship being more private, I know as soon as I give anything, people want more. You know, like, I give a little bit and... It's like, yeah, but you're the gatekeeper. And I feel like you've been struggling with keeping it a secret and like feeling like that, it, like you're doing something like, I feel like you, you're struggling with that and you're keeping it a secret. I don't for struggle. Reason. I don't struggle with it. I just am kind of like, if I put it out there, it's out there. And like, as soon as you put anything out there, people want more of it. So what I'm saying is like, they clearly made the decision to keep it. They didn't, she didn't discuss it at all. But as fans or like people in the public, pe- Fans and followers were like, I want to know why did they choose the surrogate route, you know, but it's like to learn more. But there's yeah. plenty of other people who have shared, you know, their. Well, I'm happy journey. to hear those stories, but I don't, you know, I don't follow <laughs> Joe. You know, Joe's not. Jonas. The right. I don't follow <laughs> Teresa from, you know, the third street promenade who had a, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to find those people. Wait, I she follow lives these at people. The third street promenade or I they, don't know. They have I don't know. Ter- I know Teresa. Okay. You know, yeah. Teresa, she, you know, she's a but, great mom. I'm really happy for her. That's worked out great. Yeah, me too. But what I'm saying is like, that's not some, I don't know any of these, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm happy to hear everybody's stories, but I just happen to follow Nick and Priyanka. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just saying like, we always, we're always like, but why, you know, even the conversation last night we were, I was having with Haley and when, when we read it, she was like, I wonder why they went the surrogate route. And I was like, I don't know, but clearly they didn't want to share it for a reason. I know, but then I'm wondering why they shared it at all. Like, why did they post that Instagram post? Well, I think if paparazzi or people caught them carrying a baby, they'd be like, whose child is this? (laughs) (laughs) Eventually there would be questions that did need an answer. Well, you know, to each their own. (laughs) To each their own. And I just, I've loved it. So, well, Easton and I both have decided the last two episodes have brought us back. The last episode was so freaking funny. I was laughing out loud the whole time. I watched with Haley, who's never, she's never watched the original show. She's only watched like clips here and there. We were dying laughing. And we were like, that is the most Tanya. Like, there's been several times where Charlotte, I'm like, no, so Tanya. Well, sometimes you get a really good batch of Taco Bell, and then sometimes you get a less enjoyable version where, like, things just taste a little off. They're not, like, super fresh or warm. I use the word fresh, and Haley goes, I don't know that Taco Bell's ever necessarily fresh, Fresh. (laughs) but sometimes it tastes better. So I don't know what it came from. Anyways, thought it was going to be a 24-hour thing. I'm talking a week long of, like that like that <laughs> emergency that ruin your time or, or ruin your your relationship yeah i, I mean there i i some i'm i would consider myself kind of a jealous person but i also think that we both acknowledge 95p and i both acknowledge when someone's attractive and i i it's never in a way of being like Oh, I want to sleep with them. It's just like, they're beautiful or like, wow, they have an amazing body or like, you know, it's just, I think acknowledging people's beauty is not, does not diminish your own beauty. And I think it's like, if, if he's saying things and doing things that make you feel secure in yourself, like then what he's saying about celebrities who are just like celebrities are beautiful people. And on top of them being beautiful, they're on our screens and they have this element of star 
quality or whatever. And I mean, it's very natural to acknowledge their beauty. If he's saying things that are inappropriate and then he's not balancing that out with complimenting you or making you feel good about yourself, then maybe you can have a conversation and just be like, hey, I I would like to feel those things. I want you to I want to hear those things about me and just to like let him know that you would like to hear words of affirmation. Maybe that's where you receive love the most. And therefore, when he's saying it to about someone else, you take it to mean that he doesn't feel that about you. So um, I don't think that I'm with Tanya. I think it's really normal and natural to have those moments of jealousy. And sometimes I react differently depending on like if I'm on my period or something, I'm like, what do you mean? Like I overthink right, things right, that I right, hear, right. but the truth is, is that he's with you. He's probably fantasizing about you and what y'all do together and not about, you know. Do you know 95P cell phone number by heart? I just learned it. Dang it. But I only learned it because I felt like kind of weird that I really only know. I know like my sisters and my moms. Yeah. So I have a funny story about that. But I was hoping you were going to say no, oh. but that's okay. Hang on. Should we recut this? <laughs> no, hold on. Speaking of, so we, Haley and I went to the spa yesterday because we were like, let's go to the spa. Everyone's going to be watching the Super Bowl. No one will be there. It was like the greatest decision I've ever made. Was it empty? Empty. Oh. And we were just like laying by the pool got massages, had drinks, kind of like checking in to see what the score was. Oh, it was nice. It was. I just didn't care. Well, no, I don't care about football, but the whole like spirit of it is so fun. Yeah. I, so next year, what I think I oh, think next year, <laughs> because I love this, this ball thing go <laughs> earlier because we, we booked it super late. So like they didn't have a ton of slots for a massage. And so we if we booked it earlier and then had like laid by the pool went uh got our massages and then went to a super bowl party that would be like ideal <laughs> like 95 p and i we don't live together but we go back like we alternate places so like i still feel like i'm home i'm my home and yeah then we go back and forth so and they're both set up for phoebe too so yeah I was going to say, oh, the other day, speaking of, actually, I don't think we were speaking of this, but the other day I was doing a Q&A on Instagram and someone asked like, so are you single or are you still in a relationship? I, oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm in a relationship almost four years because in my mind, I feel like I talk about it on here. So right. it didn't feel surprising. Oh, People really? were literally like, shook. what in the heck? I have followed you since The Bachelor and yeah, had no idea. Yeah, because you don't idea. post anything about your relationship. I know, but I think because I talk about it on here. I know. I just assume, but like, it's so shocking how few people follow me on instagram and don't listen to the podcast i was like should i be offended by this that like this many people like they were like how are and it's also funny because it's like how are you so good at keeping it private like how do we not know and i'm like well people control what they post on instagram yeah but i guess i get what they're saying because you really do you really do do a good job of like I would if I didn't know and I just watched your Instagram, I would have no idea know, you were in a relationship. Don't you control what like no one would know you were in a relationship if you didn't post about it. Right. That's what I'm saying. So they're like, how do you how did you how are you keeping it private? And I'm like, well, oh, that's interesting because people are. But so I feel used like you slip every once in a while. Like sometimes I'll have like Red Star's voice will be in the background of a video. I didn't even know it was in the background. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I probably do that all the time. I have oh. no idea. <laughs> um, but I Wait, just, so it really was like really an overwhelming am amount? Shocking amount. They were like, what? Like, I have followed you on here forever. And then there's also people, you know, it's funny. I get such a mixed bag of reviews. The majority of people are like, I'm just so happy you're happy and in a relationship. And then other people are like, why do you keep it private? Like, that's hurtful. And I'm like, to who? <laughs> who am I hurting? Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny. Like people, there's this sense of feeling inclined to know about someone's like personal life. Yeah. If they're like, you know, which I, I mean, I, to an extent I get it. It's like people follow me. They're like who they want to know. They want to support me, whatever. But 
um, it was just really funny. The like, that's interesting response. I, I did not expect that. I know. And then also we got, I got asked if you and I were actually yeah, that, in a relationship. That is my favorite response ever. <laughs> Definitely not a podcast listener. Definitely not a podcast listener. But um, I laughed out loud. And so I also got an overwhelming response to that. And they were like, that would be the most chaotic relationship of all time. And I was like, you have no idea. Hey! Uh- <laughs> That would be a relationship with a lot of love, a lot of trust, a lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah. I did feel like I was in a relationship with you at one point before you met Red Star. Really? Yeah. I felt like I was dating you and 95P and I was like really having to give you both the attention you deserve. (laughs) Now I have Sunny giving me that. I was curious if you got pregnant with a red star yeah right now what would be your reaction be i don't know (laughs) right in this very moment i would i would uh in this very moment i would uh, i don't know i mean i'd be happy obviously Mm -hmm. but i I don't know (laughs) what about you (laughs) An accident? Yeah. Huh. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, what if you got I mean, pregnant I feel like right I now? I could. I would have a... I mean, I would be... I thought you would thrive right now with a baby. I probably would. Yeah. I love... I honestly love babies. Like, the baby phase is, like, the best phase for me. Yeah. I Like, I went to Louisiana, and two of my friends had little babies, and I just held them the whole time. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like you... A baby would be really good for you right now. <laughs> easy breezy for me? No, not easy breezy, but... <laughs> I feel like you're so nurturing and like loving and I, and I don't know. Yeah, I could handle, it would like disrupt my schedule, like my life just schedule. Just, just, a, just a tad. Yeah. My like sleep schedule and travel schedule yeah. a little bit. But um, if it happened, I'd be like, oh, I got this. Yeah. Feel that way. Well, I would too. I'd, I'd be like, I got this. And I slept like a baby. The bus just like rocked me to sleep for the whole night. And I was like, a bug is where it's at. I have heard the same thing. In fact, I was on Haley's tour bus and that she had the back too. And I was like, this is nice. You have a whole bed. And then um, she was like, no, I don't, I don't sleep in this because I can't, it's really loud. It's really bumpy. I sleep, I sleep like she said the same thing. I sleep like a baby in the the coffin. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been doing this whole tour wrong. I've- <laughs> So, Becca, if you had one that was similar to Tanya's, would you ask 95P? Would you let it play out? Would you ask your sister? What would happen? 95P is similar to Tanya in liking liking the mm, experience. Mm-hmm. But I try to not ask. You know, I just, I try to just hope that they Don't do notice. their own thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Me too. Honestly, me too. But this one I could tell was was a big Bertha. This and one, this, one, <laughs> this one needs some this relief. One's, <laughs> this one is staring at me. Like, there's an <laughs> eye on it. <laughs> So I went to a concert last night. We went and saw Fletcher and then Haley came out because she has a song with Fletcher called Cherry. And so she came out and surprised everyone. And the the concert, Fletcher didn't go until 10. Oh my. And Haley didn't come Ugh. out till 11. 11? And I was oh my God. dying. Like I have like all my On family. Being, yeah. And so and then I was like so hyped because like it was so fun. And like everyone was so excited when Haley came out. And so then there was an after party on the rooftop. So we stayed and went. I went to sleep at three last night. Oh, oh my this God. Morning. <laughs> well, I have to tell you. Seriously. And oh, speaking of content, I was. um. I didn't realize Ben's season of The Bachelor is on Hulu. You can watch it. And I was going to go back and do like, I haven't watched it since it aired. And I was going to do like a series where I like rewatch it and just basically cringe the whole time. (laughs) I like get nervous even thinking about it. (laughs) Thought it'd be fun. I like see clips on myself on screen and I'm like, (sighs) would 95P want to watch that or would that be uncomfortable? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, Red I mean, P is like yes. the biggest. Ninety five P is like the biggest Bachelor fan. <laughs> so was Red Star. Sure the desire to watch it is there. I just wonder if that would be awk. I have to do. I have to go through some things that are awk for me in this relationship. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, so there's that. I'm going back to Mexico on Wednesday, so. And then where from there? Oh, my gosh. And then, um, I don't know, but I will be out of town the next weekend, too, because it's Haley's birthday, but I don't know where we're going wow. yet. But um, it'll be drivable. But And you'll so. be back on Monday for the podcast. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Great. Joe, I don't know. You know what I think we need? What? A sexy photo shoot. <laughs> We've been talking about... <laughs> I think a sexy photo shoot might make me so dark. No, that, like, no, we, it like, makes my no, mojo crash no, and burn. We prep for it, so it's like okay, we put a date in the calendar. Let's say the photo shoot's May first. Okay, so we're gonna do this photo shoot May first, and we have to like prep ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally. We'll get cute lingerie. We'll get a spray tan. We'll like go on a lot of runs. It'll be so cute. Prime mojo. And we're just taking crystals them to look on at? our boobs. Huh? Okay. <laughs> We're just taking them like to look at for ourselves to give sure, ourselves an edge. Sure. Maybe post them in the Facebook group. Well, you could share them with your partners, couldn't you? <laughs> or post yeah. them in the Facebook group. They'll be tasteful. Well, I don't find that my mojo is, ones. I don't find that my mojo is lacking in my personal life. Like I feel like I'm very confident. Like 95P makes me feel very confident. Like that part of my life is very secure. But mojo is all encompassing. It's not oh. like secular. Like, <laughs> no, I don't think that. I don't think that was it. That's not what I'm looking at. Uh, Mojo is all encompassing. It is not linear. Mm, okay, does that work? Yeah, I think I that think works so, but... better than secular. So we'll <laughs> take the we'll take the win there. <laughs> I'm curious, how do you? differentiate your gut feelings intuition oh, versus no. paranoia give me an example like oh that's a good question because yeah. i find that my gut fe- like i'm telling you what's you paranoia this- where you're like making up things in your head i guess and convincing yourself that it's real but it's it's not you know you don't have any like basis on it you're just like paranoid that it's happening okay and then your intuition's similar in a way um so for example like if i'm watching this is a dumb example but when i watch the bachelor any reality tv show i can immediately spot who like i have an intuition about who is like gonna be good or like the villain or whatever so with people i have a really good intuition okay Okay, so then paranoia is like me having this (laughs) mental like break down that 95p was like cheating on me did this happen this is real oh okay 95p not even cheating on me like talking to someone else like behind my back i guess that's a form of cheating and then playing um dirty little secret when i gave the aux cord over and then that was the first song 95p played and i was like you tell me I'm wrong. Oh, so then I express my oh, paranoia. And 95P is like, are you mentally okay? <laughs> and I was like, I have a really good intuition. And 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 the conversation went south after that. Did you have any uh nothing, facts? Nothing. Just a just a feeling. I've just been feeling a little insecure. <laughs> but this goes ties in with your mojo your so lack yeah, of mojo okay, this is so, yes this actually ties back to the insecurity of the breeds paranoia <laughs> exactly yeah but i gotta tell you something if you you're like okay, okay, that's like okay that's like me saying i think i'm gonna get married tomorrow okay well this is weird uh let me know uh i'm trying to like think of a comparison but hold on <laughs> Wait, let me, get, let me comparison get, to hold on let me just me get being there cheated on? let me just get there okay, okay? Let's let her get there. <laughs> always, getting there is half the fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> give me an analogy. That's like me. Okay. That's like me going for a job, right? Yes. I'm, I'm interviewing for this job. I'm like, really just like, I really want this job. I've been praying for this job. It falls into my lap. And then I'm thinking about this job and I get in my car and I hear, you got it. You got it. You got it. Bad. That Usher song. Or whatever. Okay, you okay. You got it, you got it. That was like, so off key, but I got I figured <laughs> out where you were going through. I would all I would think I would take that as a sign that I got the job. Like you got it, you got it. If I was really thinking about it. So I feel like there's something where where you're having these thoughts about conversations happening behind your back and then the song comes on as dirty little secret. That to me feels like a sign. 
not to be more paranoid to you. Oh, so you're confirming my paranoia. Yeah. Oh, my God. I believe in signs. <laughs> okay, so that's where my whole my whole question is. Where do you cross? Where's the line between paranoia and Intuition. How is that helpful, Tanya? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that- to, to be honest, I thought you were going in a different direction. So now yes. I will be spiraling for the foreseeable future. No, but you already did it. So here's the thing. You already shared your paranoia and it was shot down by 95P. So now you have to yeah. take their word for it. After, after expressing my paranoia yeah. and 95P's response, I really, this is, those thoughts are gone. Yeah. But it did breed the question of, where is the fine line between if you really feel like you have a good intuition and gut feeling and you really trust your gut, then where do you draw the line of what paranoia feels like? You know what I'm saying? I Not to discount signs from uh, that may manifest in different from places, her, but I talking? do think... Yeah, watch out. Watch what you say, man. I'm, I'm so, <laughs> I, I mean, I like that kind of thing too, but, but I think that paranoia starts to rear its ugly head once you're doing, oh God, there's a confirmation bias name for this, but like when you're looking for things and kind of cherry picking details to confirm what you're suspecting versus intuition is just an inexplicable feeling that may not have any evidence. Like, I don't think it's like, oh, a bird flew over me. Therefore my mother's going to be in a car accident. Like it's nothing like that. It's just like, I have a feeling something bad's happening. Uh, Allison has a really strong intuition and she's always right. So I, um, I always, whenever she's like, eh, I think something fishy about this. I always trust her yeah. because she's good that way. And, uh, it's just been proven to me too many times. Um, but she's not like, you know what the there's this, this restaurant's, ch- uh, checkerboard tablecloths. I think, um, something, you know, a car's about to run through the door. Like there's nothing like that. Well, that's I, I think, a bit um, of a stretch. Wouldn't you say? I mean, someone could say that about Usher saying you got it yeah, bad, I'm and that means you got you this got job. You got it. I'm just no, trying to think of a better you song. Got it. I was trying to think of a better song, so forgive me. But it was like, it's, a, it's not the song. That song's not the okay. issue. Yeah. Yes, it um, is. Okay. Anyway, we, we get what you're saying. I, th- that's what I, th- I think. Intuition is a feeling, and then paranoia is where you're like looking for specific details to to confirm. It's yeah, whatever I think you for. need to know the difference between your gut and paranoia because I do yeah. think they are separate things. Yeah. Me too, but where does when paranoia you're thinking come from, about then? them? You're they feel the same essentially. They can, they can if it's something like that. Like you're being cheated on, they can definitely feel yeah. like the same thing. Yeah, but I do like the I do like the part about like when you're searching for things to prove the paranoia. Yeah, you can that's definitely when do it that. doesn't feel as like a peaceful intuition. Yeah. It's a little more like I'm forcing this. Yeah, dark. Okay. Did that help you? You didn't, but Easton and Mark did. <laughs> I think Easton. Easton can have this one. Tanya did zero help, and now I feel like I just emailed into the podcast and got advice. <laughs> but anyways, my thoughts... I'm a one-stop shop, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you worry. I got you covered. But Signs I will say, and all. Jokes aside, even Tanya's analogy, I, I, I still don't, I don't feel that way. I just... It, it did make me think. Like It made me question my intuition. Because I was like, whoa, how do you know the difference between paranoia and intuition? It's a good conversation starter. Maybe mm-hmm. people can start talking about it on the Facebook group or something. <laughs> or message me about it since no one ever messages. No, I'm just kidding. People do message me. I went to the um, Elton John after party last night. Ooh, oh, I thought you were at the you, Vanity Becca. Fair after party. No, Vanity fair no that's that's the goal for next year the vanity oh, fair oh my god i thought that's where you were no it was the elton john um i went with Haley and brandy carlisle performed and i was i so then i you know when you go to those things and you're just like praying you see someone you know because it's just like so awkward and the whole thing with these parties everyone's just kind of like looking at each like no one's it's not as like it was fun but it's not as this like oh my gosh like glamorous thing because everyone's just kind of staring like looking to see who's who it's a little overwhelming but I see my friend Keo standing and she's next to Leah Michelle and I'm like I've met Leah before who's your friend Keo she's my friend Shawnee who did his face uh, esthetician oh, okay, okay. her one of her good friends okay. and they're all that friends that was a very LA conversation you guys just had that was and extremely I'm like LA. I've never heard that name out of Becca's mouth in my life so I need to give get some context <laughs> My friend, friend Shawnee's esthetician. Oh, right. Okay. Sure. Yeah, no, she's Shawnee is esthetician. And oh, Shawnee is Becca's one of her best friends. So she's Got one it. of her friends. Anyways, I see I her. It, so I, I walk over. It. I'm hand, I'm hanging with, uh, we're just watching Brandy Carlisle with Leah Michelle. And 
uh, Keo and me and Haley, and then we go into the, like the after after party, and I'm like, okay, what's the after after party? Well, like the other side is where like all the the bar and everything. Ah, uh, okay. And I see um, Nick Vile and his girlfriend, Natalie. And I was like, oh, my God, thank God, familiar faces again. And so I'm with them. And then I keep walking and I see Sophia, Paulina and Zach. And I'm like, thank God. (laughs) I was just I had enough in me and I was so deliriously tired that like if I saw someone that I liked or recognized, I would just be like, hi, and introduce myself because in my mind, I'm like, worst case they suck and like right, I'll right, move on from right. it. Like it wasn't like Jennifer Aniston tier, so I was like comfortable at least enough. Well, Phoebe like typically doesn't give me much attention. Like she's kind of like, hey, oh, you're back. Last night, the whole time I was getting ready for the party, she wanted to be in my lap and she would just turn See? around and like smile at me. Like, I do want to say like- Instagram sometimes makes me feel very seen. Like I have a, a, a really nice community because on Friday I was honestly like preparing to leave her and I couldn't stop crying like not sobbing hysterically but like actual like tears coming down my face and I like couldn't say bye to her I just kept hugging her and I just didn't want to leave her and I went on Instagram and I was just like I don't know what's wrong with me I've never left her for a weekend I can't stop crying so many people said that they feel dead they do the same thing so I felt I felt very um but like a lot of people wrap their arms around me, which I appreciate. I still want to give Phoebe to a sitter. That's not so like my sister or Haley. I, yeah. I get emotional. So just so you know, that doesn't change. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, and so it's only like 24 it. hours, really. A little more than 24 hours. Yeah, like barely. Yeah. I love hugs. Like I love hugs and squeezing people. And I'm not like scared of physical touch or but there is something about like cuddling in a bed that I just like to, I like my space except mm-hmm. for with 95 P mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but I do appreciate you. So you can shooting. cuddle with 95 P yeah. Like it, like whilst like until you fall asleep and continue cuddling while sleeping. I think I naturally just go over to my side when I'm sleeping. Like I but think once I'm asleep in an I can, embrace yeah. of some sort. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I quickly will be needing to flip over and be on my stomach with my head facing. And I like to be like on the edge of the bed, like right on Mm -hmm. the edge Mm -hmm. where I'm safest. It can't be reached by any roving toes. Right. No toes. No ET toes coming over. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate you shooting your shot. Thank you. You know, every shot that's not shot is Is a shot unshot. Oh. (laughs) I actually think that I used to do that too. And then um, that's kind of like some of those conversations are what led to like needing to go to couples therapy. Cause those types of like, if you leave, it's over. Like, you know, I'm leaving that type of mentality is yeah. very, it's out of desperation and fear, but it's so unhealthy. And there's no reason there should be this conversation as to, as opposed to a conversation of what could we have done better to not let that escalate to that point. Yeah. Yeah. Comfortable doing it there, whereas my husband's comfortable doing it anywhere. <laughs> well, I was laughing because I, um, we ran into you. I was with Haley and we ran yeah. into you and Adam and um, he was just so excited and they worked together on CSI Cyber and she was yes. like, he was just the nice, she was like, he has that energy and that kindness and that charisma all the time. Like no matter if we were arriving at like 4 a.m., it was that was his energy level. And she was like, he was just so um, made everything, everyone feel like warm and comfortable. He's very, very truly. Oh, it's such a gift. And the best thing ever that I got to marry that guy. (laughs) (laughs) No, actually the first day. So Haley and I went on Saturday to the beat. No, Friday. And we hear the ice cream truck and I may or may not have taken an edible and it hit. And I was like, you got to go catch it. So she takes they off They go very running. slow. Yeah, but it was turning around to go back the other way. So I was like, uh, you got to go. She listens and takes off like sprinting in the sand and got it for me. What'd you get? I got, um, you know, those like Sonic the Hedgehog, like <gasps> those ice cream things. No. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I got one of those. I got that like classic ice cream sandwich with like the chocolate and then the ice cream in the middle. And then as she was yelling, I was like, 
get chips if they have them because I knew I'd want something salty. So she got chips too. Oh my gosh. Well, that is a really great segue into oh, a seg- Sonic segue. Yes, because I saw Sonic 2 this weekend. Oh. And then yesterday <laughs> on Easter, um, Haley and I went to the spa and it was amazing. I did a spin class yesterday and then went to the spa. Yeah, I'm like fit chick right now. I've worked out three days oh, in a row. May 1st. May 1st is coming. I've You're worked, ready. I, I don't a- know if you know Mark, but we pushed it back. Oh, a Mark, you weren't here. Oh, Mark, you weren't here. I actually agree with you here because the other day I went, so Haley and I went to the guard, two different gardens this past week. I was like, who am I? We're going to like botanical gardens. And there was this one patch of grass where, I mean, there was a lot of grass, but we like sat down and it was so freaking hot. And so we were just kind of like sitting, eating and resting. And I was trying to do cartwheel, but by the way, much harder than I remember it as being an as a adult. Child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My whole body felt like seized after <laughs> and like I definitely needed to do like proper stretching that I didn't do. Um, but I was like, man, it feels so good to like feel the grass because I used to play outside barefoot all the time. And I just my like weird feelings towards feet and all, just things in general. I just don't do it enough. <laughs> Haley, the only reason I'm sharing this is because Haley is posting a TikTok about this or posted a TikTok. I don't know. About Tanya's poop? No, this is something oh. there that would happen to Tanya and it made me like die laughing. So this was last week when we were at the spa on Easter and she was like, oh my gosh, the most embarrassing thing just happened to me. And I was like, what? And she was like, she's talking quiet. I'm like, oh no, what is she going to say? And so we had eaten these sugar-free gummy gummy worms by the pool <laughs> and she was like i don't know if y'all know this about tanya but she can't eat sugar-free gum because it gives sugar her sugar free is yeah. not for me not so, for me like, whatever the sugar replacement chemical in there affects you poorly yeah my correct. daughter is the same it's like thing. xylitol or something yeah xylitol that's what can kill dogs too yeah which yeah. they put in a lot of smoothies by the way so heads up for you smoothie drinkers check those labels <laughs> always check the label <laughs> um so she's like so i'm in my massage i'm really relaxed and i was like all of a sudden i got like a feeling like my stomach hurt and i like i needed to fart and i was so panicked because she was like you know and just like by my like lower back area so i waited till she got to my feet and i was like i'm just gonna do it and it's gonna be like quiet so, like no one will even know she was like, I go to do it. And it is so loud. loud yeah. <laughs> and then she said it was just dead silent. Like none of them, like she didn't laugh. The well, she should have said, laugh. excuse me. Well, I think when you fart so in public, you say, excuse me. <laughs> do you say, excuse me? When yes, you let remember it... when I was at the nail salon and my, and my thunderstorm <laughs> came remember. out? I was like, excuse <laughs> me. I'm so sorry. I don't remember anything that you said after. <laughs> I only remember one thing and that was the sounds yeah i said i'm so sorry excuse me and i was like that is so embarrassing i would have literally crawled under the table at that point and that is so something that would happen to tawny and she was like i'm mortified like we can never come back i know but you know what we just have to normalize these things because like farting is normal <laughs> people do i would it. imagine like she- massage therapists deal with that from time to time oh, because yeah. of the way they loosen things up sure yeah yeah that's what i i comforted her but uh <laughs> But the thing is, is that the sugar-free gummy bears did not make mm-hmm. either. I also was not feeling great. And I don't consider myself someone who deals with those types of feelings often. And I was like, this is not good. It's not. This is what Tanya deals with every time she eats sugar-free gum. My God. But Shout out to my best something. friend. I love you. Why I'm don't just... you make time? We make time for each other to hang out so we can take a new photo together. I'm down. I'm living. <laughs> I don't so, know if you've heard. So we got invited to go. This is interesting. So we got invited to go on this best friend's trip, like to celebrate best friend, national best friend day or something. And it's this trip to where is it? Aruba. Aruba. Mm. Tanya goes, why don't you ask 95P? I mean, ask Robbie. And I'm like, it's for a best friend trip. And she's like, yeah, but we could like just pay for, pay for their flights and stuff. And I'm like, and she was like, and then we can just take pictures for it. And I'm like, 
It's a best friend trip. Why are you trying to invite the significant others? So first of all, wow, I, I don't even right, know you anymore. Right? Wow. Okay. Okay. Relationship Tanya is a whole different person. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. I'm like, I think it would be so fun to go on a trip together. And she's just trying to make it a couple's trip. First of all, I was not, I was given not that much information. I th- I thought we were just getting invited to go. The two, like, I thought, I knew for sure they were, inv- it was inviting the two of us. Tanya, and so it I literally hear- says for National Best Friend Day. And so, I bet it said that in the subject line of the email. Yeah, I wasn't even, email. email. I got a phone call. I got a phone call. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, okay, so I'm like looking at the dates and I'm thinking like, when can I actually go logistically with work and stuff. When can I actually make this trip happen? Like, when can I go? And I was like, okay, maybe Memorial day weekend makes sense. So I'm like, looking at the calendar and I'm like, Oh, that's my weekend with Robbie without kids. So th- that's just kind of how my brain works right now. That's just like what I thought. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll go. We're trying to arrange the dates with you. Da, 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 da. And you were like, I don't really want to go for two days. Well, I no, it was because it's a 10 hour flight. So it was yeah, like, if we can make days, it yeah. work. Yeah. That didn't even cross my mind. And then she's like, well, I thought we would go to this oh, please. Because you were going to invite Robbie. So you yeah. were just like, we're going on a couple's vacation. Yeah, and Becca might be Becca there. Becca no, comes. no. Yeah. I thought that it was going to be the four of us. I literally the whole time thought it would be the four of us. Well, I was like, interesting. Interesting. Because when mm-hmm. we don't even have a picture on Instagram because we haven't spent hardly any time together as best friends aside from doing the podcast. And she won't even go on a best friend specific trip with me without him. Tanya, you imagine, I think back to the pre Robbie era, which I know is very hard for you to imagine, but we were all there for it. Uh huh. If in the pre Robbie era, you had said to Becca, hey, best friends trip, we can go to Aruba together. They're going to send it. It's going to be great. And Becca said, great, I'll ask 95P. You would have been heartbroken and you would have whined about it for a month. <laughs> That's not true. That is true. I don't know if you like, oh, great. Yeah, I would have. First of all, I'm not a whiner, so excuse me. Um, She's I not, think you would have brought up that a number of times that 95p instead of having a best friends trip. I definitely think you would have said something. <laughs> like, I really would love to have just like a weekend like with me and you. Well, yeah, but that's not how this was approached. Tanya. This was not approached to me in that way. I'm By telling whom? you, it was not. Well, whoever and approached you about it did not read the email. <laughs> <laughs> it was a thing. I did know it was with you. It was like me and you. And so I literally just thought it would be the four of us. This is not, this, this is not, not my <laughs> bad. And this is not my bad. I think it's your bad. And as far as not whining goes, I think texting Becca and saying, I'm nowhere near the top of your Instagram page <laughs> is whining. Uh, she was just jo- half joking. It's half whining then. I like oh, public displays of affection. I know. Okay. You know, yes. To, to so be honest, blow me, all and, of you. And honestly, no, no. Seriously though, blow me. It made me think because my first reaction, which I actually sent, was like, "Oh, I'm not far on there on yours." And then you were like, "But you don't care, or whatever." And my first reaction was like, "Well, what does that mean? Like to get defensive?" And then I was like, "You know what? I don't really care." And if Tanya does care, then that is something that I can make happen as her best friend because that means a lot to her. Even though it doesn't mean a lot to me. See? Mm -hmm. And so I was like trying to make that happen and say, like, let's have a night together. Let's get cute. Let's go to dinner. You know when we will be cute and look at snacks. Playing a tango, but no, no, no. no. Our boudoir photo shoot. Yeah, which is that's in a that's a little bit. But that's far weird away, if we though. take photos together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, what are we like? Are we like selfies in our <laughs> lingerie? Like, I am impressed I with you. how you handle that, Becca. Because uh, <laughs> years ago, t- 2011, my dad came to me and he's like, "You know, I don't see many pictures of me on your Facebook." And I was like, "Watch this!" And I deleted Facebook. <laughs> I deactivated it. I was off Facebook until like. Two years ago, I was off for a very long time because I, I was like, this doesn't matter. Pictures doesn't, doesn't mean anything. I'll show you how much it matters to me. I'm going to delete that. You know, I, and I thought that was a very defensive thing to say instead of like, oh, you know, why, why does that bother you? Let's talk about this. Uh, so I, I'm impressed with because that's the right way to do it. Do? Becca was like, screw Thanks it. So just delete. Screw it. I'm off page. Instagram. That's it. <laughs> delete yeah. Yeah. And that actually feels very like gnarly of a reaction from you. Yeah, uh, you know, well, I I thought it was a weird thing to bring up to somebody. <laughs> like, like I don't know. Uh, sorry to get, sorry, Tanya, but I I did think it was like 
a weird thing to say. Uh, but also it was a very gnarly nuclear reaction from me. See, I also find it so weird. Like I could never see myself doing that. However, yeah. I appreciated her communicating it to me as opposed to like stewing about it. Right, or like then, being passive aggressive. Yeah, like yeah. being yeah. passive aggressive about it. So for me, I was like, would I ever do that? No. But this is a very Tanya thing for her to do. And she's communicating what she needs and what's important to her. Wow. Even though I'm like, that's... Yes. This is mature. This is... You know what they call <laughs> very. this? Very. Maturity. Oh. M-A-T-U-R-I-T-Y. Thousands of dollars of therapy <laughs> in dating someone who is similar in their communication. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm thankful for this therapist. <laughs> I'm um, reaping the benefits. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you are. I feel like as it was already is the song of summer. You know, that can be your vote. That's <clears> fine. <throat> I feel like that's the song is the spring. Like, I'm going to associate that song with the spring, like the flowers I, I don't think and bloom. That's going and... anywhere anytime soon. I well, think that's I think his be... album's going to come out. So I think it might turn into, you know, something, something else. different. Yeah. Who with knows you. what do else you, he Do you has. have a pitch for Song of the Summer? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, For the Girls by Hayley Kiyoko. Oh, wow. This feels, which also this feels drops, like it has a little bias to it. <laughs> which also <laughs> drops May 20th or May, what's 19th. that Friday? What? Yeah, the 20th oh, yeah, Friday. Oh, yeah, the night of the 19th. Um, It's so fun. It goes, summer's for the girls, the girls are like girls the girls are like boys the girls the girls yeah all right all right so we all have our pitches and we'll check back in in august and we'll see east and i are on the same page <laughs> um yeah it was really fun it was just like fun to have i mean obviously so Haley rode up with robbie and tanya and then the other day she was hanging out with uh Carson and Allie okay. and she was like I was just the third wheel all weekend like with the two couples and I was like I actually really enjoy being a third wheel like I feel very taken care like I almost feel like a kid when I'm a third wheel you know like both people they're like trying to take care of you bringing you snacks I did I, felt, I know but the whole weekend we did feel like we needed we were always checking in with Haley to make sure she didn't want to like come with us to lunch <laughs> or do anything because we were just like she's just chilling in her room but I think the third wheel gets a bad rap and I'm like, I think I like it. I feel very cared for as a third wheel. Like I'm like catered to. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but I will say, so we were driving out and Haley was with us. So it was me, Robbie and Haley. And traffic was just wild on Friday. I don't know what in the world, but we were in the car and we were already going to be late to this, to the, what was it called? Welcome party. We were going to be late. So I was like, we can't pull over. And I had to pee so bad. Oh, yeah. I had my hydro flask and I was like, I know we're late. I really have to pee. So I'm just going to go in my hydro flask. And they both looked at me like I was from planet Mars. They were like, you're going to what? So clearly they don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're zero not aware. Support. Yeah, zero support. <laughs> um, so that was first in the rankings. Um, so then I told them the story about when we were going to the airport and I had to pee in my hydro flask. And Cut to, they pulled over to a gas station and we all got to pee and I just felt very um, respected by them. This is, I, I just had this conversation yesterday. Somehow this story has morphed into this version where I <laughs> do not care about Tanya. I only care about getting to the flight on time as if I care about getting to the flight on time. That's the best part of how this story has taken another like turn because she makes it sound like we had all the time in the world and I just would not pull over. <laughs> I need to bring up the original podcast story because it's not that fresh, but yeah, I remember it really, being like yeah. seven lanes of traffic trying to get to the Boston airport. It was like deadlocked. To get over and find somewhere to pee, we would have missed the flight. Like there was just, it was like it that true. conversation. It is true. We did walk on to the plane. But now she's, her story today is that I did not take care of her. She did not feel respected. I just like basically ignored her needs. And that's how rumors get started. <laughs> and so I was watching her like retell it on her story again. And I was like, this is not the truth yeah, Tanya so Becca really wants to clear the air here. I needed to clear the air because I feel like 
You know, everyone has their own version of what happened, but we have actual proof oh. of that because we told the story right, right after. after it happened. Yeah. We should roll the tape. Roll the tape. Yeah. So we'll find that and we'll get to the bottom of this. But the way I saw it, <laughs> yeah. I felt very held captive into the car. And my <laughs> only choice of relieving myself as a woman who's prone to UTIs was to go in the hydro flask. 